What's up guys, hope you all have a wonderful day and welcome back to another Microsoft Flight Simulator video. This one is going to be a very quick one on how to set up the A32NX. You can also use this on the default A320. There's just going to be a couple of buttons that might not correctly work compared to the A32NX. So let's get straight into it. So first of all, we are doing this from cold and dark. I am currently sitting in Vancouver International Airport here with a nice beautiful Air Canada delivery. Absolutely beautiful. First thing you want to do is come up here, turn on the batteries. Both, or both of them. If you do have external power, you can also turn that on. You will now hear that click in and you will now see that the engine or the airplane is starting and you can see it's doing the self test and you can also hear the air conditioning turning on which means you've started correctly then you want to move up and do the apu fire test which is right up here press on that and then hold it down there you go that works so we'll turn that off and now we can start up the apu so turn on the master didn't mean to turn that out sorry turn on the master and also the start switch and then after that, we can turn on the lighting. So overhead panel, you can turn up the dim, or we can turn up the dome lighting. Then you can also go down, go to the APU overhead panel, or the APU panel. You can turn up the lighting right below it. On the left side, you can turn up the lighting for the displays, the M, PFD, and the ND. Then f um, you can also turn that up right here, the brightness on the plus and the minus sign on the left side of it. Then go down to the MCDU, you can turn the brightness up on there if you want to. Then scrolling down a little bit further, you can see the integrated lighting. You can turn that up as well for the throttle quadrant. And the floodlight, you can turn that up as well, which is going to be for the front right there. On the right side, you will see another floodlight, which is going to be for the lower part, which is right here. Then also lock the cockpit door. You can turn on the lower ECAM and the upper ECAM um, lighting as well. And then you got that done. Then what you usually do in an A320 is work your way from the left to the right, from bottom top so we'll work over here first first of all everything is down here is good we'll see the crew supply which is we're going to press on turn on you will see there's two faults right here for terrain and um, sys you don't have to worry about that because our nav is not aligned yet and we also don't have the engine up and running uh, make sure the captain is good here just make sure it's on cap down there and um, flight control make sure those are not saying fault as you will maybe lose um, some like fly-by-wire kind of software um, if those are on fault. Then up here um, on the nav light, turn those to nav. You'll see quick fault line. In, in, in the real airplane, you would see that. And once it's illuminated and once it turns off, you'll be able to go on to the next nav light. So press that nav as well. Make sure they're all in the nav. Now you will see down here on the upper ECAM, it's around seven minutes for the IRS to align. You can also do that on the MCDU, manually put the... Um, the nav lines, geez, sorry about that, the um, IRS is in there, um, so you don't have to wait for the full seven minutes. I'm not going to do an MCDU tutorial right now, I'm going to make that in another video. Um, you can also see right down here in the APU, if you go on the APU, our APU is now fully up and running, which is the auxiliary power unit, which is right down there, and you can hear that as well. Then once we have completed that, let's continue moving on. So everything up here is completely fine, you can see the SYS is up and running now as well. Then let's move down here. First of all, turn the seatbelt signs on. No smoking signs, they come to auto. Nav lights, you turn those on. And then you can um, also make sure that the emergency exit lights are armed. Very nice. And then once up here, um, anti-IC, turn that on at a later date. Landing elevation, uh, make sure that's on auto, not somewhere over here. Put that on to auto. Um, turn on the APU bleed. Then turn up the air conditioning for the cockpit to like the middle. That's what I usually do. It always depends on the outside temperature. You also hear the um, you also hear the APU starting in the back now, which you can completely hear now, which is nice. Um, up here the generators. You see two faults. Um, don't worry about that because our engines are not up and running yet. Then continue moving up. Turn off or turn on all the pumping um, the pumps. And then we have basically completed that. Now you can do the test for the engine one. Just press and hold. And engine number two. There you go. Then on the right side, you don't have to worry about anything in here. Everything is basically up and running. There's no faults. If Like the whole thing about the A32, or Airbus in general, is if there's any lights on, that means you've done something wrong. Um, you just want to have the least amount of lights on, that means you're good. Not like in the um, Boeing. Um, once you've done that, let's move over to the um, APU right here. Uh, not the APU, the AP. 
So the autopilot. So first of all, set your Q&H to whatever is local at your airport right now. So in my case, it's 2992. You can change that by just simply scrolling around there. You get that from the um, meta information or from the um, from the air traffic controller, whatever you have. I usually switch it to um, Haskell Pascal or Hector Pascal. That's what I usually do. Turn on the flight director. Then you can change this to nav, whatever you want to change it to, whatever you're comfortable for takeoff. And make sure your constraints are on. Then you can also change um, the distance, so it shows you 320 nautical miles out. I put it on 10 for departure. Then over here you can set up your speed. I put it on to managed. Usually I do put it up to around 250, as that is the constraint below 10,000 feet. Um, but I, you can just simply put that on to managed once again. Um, heading, also make sure that's on managed. Um, altitude, you can change that to whatever you um, first like. What first you're gonna climb to. Um, if you're not on an air traffic controller, you can of course <laughs> you can of course follow the charts. If you're not on an air traffic, um, if you're not guided by an air traffic controller, or if you're just flying manually, you can change that up to whatever your cruising altitude is. So for instance, thirty-two thousand feet or something like that. You can just put it up there. Um, then you can also change that um, for the first officer side, but you don't have to. So you can, for instance, change that, turn that on, turn constraints on, whatever you want to do. Then also make sure down here um, you are going to turn on the um, the predictive wind shear, which will show up once this is loaded up as well. Um, don't turn off, uh, don't turn on your radar, as that will affect the ground crew and stuff like that. That is basically it. We have now completely set everything up and we're ready to start the engines. So what you would now do is turn off the external power, as we are fully independent on our APU now. Then you contact the ground crew. So in my case, I'm using um, an add-on which is ground crew helper, which or pushback helper, which helps you push back easier. So what I do, I just press on the activate button. You will now see that our um, pushback truck is moving towards us, and then once he's connected, we'll um, we'll remove the parking brakes. So we'll turn them off. Now as well, we want to turn on the beacon light, as our engine is going to start here in a second. So, he should be connected here any second. Let's just quickly see from the outside. There we go. He's now connected, so we'll remove the parking brake. And then what you want to do is put your engine starter, put that to ignition and starter. Then start engine number two just by simply flicking that. You will now see the engine moving up in here, which is pretty simple. Wait until that says available, and then we'll just turn on the second engine, or the first engine. So we'll wait for that for a little bit here. And there you go, now it says available, so we will now switch it over to the first engine. Of course, you would not push back if your um, IRSs are not aligned yet, which still has three minutes. Um, I'm not going to do anything about that, I'm just going to wait for that, um, because this is just a brief tutorial. So usually you wait until those seven minutes are down, and everything is aligned here, and you can put everything in. And of course, you'd also set on the MCDU. Again, I'm not a professional, I'm just giving you a brief overview of how I usually do it. Also, um, our tow truck just disconnected, so we will now put that back onto the on position. And we'll just wait for the engine to start up again. Also, in the meantime, while you're doing that, you would have received um, your TCAS by now, your transponder code, um, by the um, air traffic controller. So you can put that onto auto, put in whatever you received, and then once you add the one way, you're going to switch that over to, um, well, just before takeoff, you can switch that over to TARA, and then you'll be able to put that on. And there you go, engine is available now. So you'll switch this back over to the norm mode. And now you're completely set up. And that is basically it. That's all you have to do. And now you're fully set up your plane. Again, not great tack, I push back here. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. Well, thank you very, guys. thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.